Right, today I'm throwing pour overs and I finally got around to doing a blog post all about them. I've done a few videos so you might well have seen one before but I finally kind of put it all down in a blog post so I thought as I was throwing some uh, I would uh, just go through the process and explain kind of the blog post a little bit. Uh, also quite conveniently I brought back my plastic V60 to photograph for the blog post so I can show you this while it's in the studio. Uh, it's in focus. Interesting. The camera's not showing me that any of that's in focus, but it must be. Um, so this is a two cup V60. A V60 is a type of pour over made by Hario. Um, and it's basically a cone with, you've got a flat base and a cone. Um, and the important things to note are the ridges on the inside um, and then the big hole through the bottom and then a flat bit to fit on a cup. The main thing uh, that makes it pour over and not a dripper is that big hole. So otherwise they're very similar but functionally there is a difference between the two. Um, what I'm doing is I'm throwing 600 grams of clay and I am throwing pour overs which have the big hole and drippers have a small hole. And the reason for that is that with a dripper, the dripper itself controls the speed at which the uh, liquid passes through, which is why it drips. So it'll always drip because you put relatively small holes in. With a pour over, you have a much bigger hole, and if you didn't have any coffee in it, the water will go through very, very quickly. Um, and then what you do is you control the grind of the coffee. So the finer it is, the slower the coffee, the slower the liquid passes through. Uh, and the more time it has to brew. So you you get control over the end cup of coffee by the the fineness of the grind, essentially. Uh, so that's the difference, and it is quite important to their functionality. The good thing is a pour over um, is very easy to throw because you're just you're making the big hole, and it's the end user that controls. The um, kind of a cup of coffee by how they grind it. So you need the ability to do that, but if you aim to have something that works like a V60, then any uh, commercially bought coffee designed to work with pour overs should work absolutely fine in yours. So, what I do 600 grams of clay, I centre it, I expand the base out to similar sort of size to the V60 and then I move the rest of the clay up into the centre open all the way to the back, you don't need to do this and if you're doing a dripper you would want to stop short and then you could add the holes later but if you're doing a pour over I find it best to just open it the whole way through at this point and then they're a bit tricky because you've got to pull the wall of your um, cone part up from that base of clay and it's quite a wide cone with a narrow base of support so they are a technically um, relatively challenging thing to throw in one part but there is no need to throw them in one part you can throw the base and the cone separately and join them later called a V60 because it's 60 degree angle um, on the cone itself and I have this thing that I designed and is they cut and produced by Hartley and Noble, it's a collaboration between us. Um, I'll post the link because I made it as a printable guide to start with. Um, I'll post the link so you can print your own one if you want or you can buy one directly from Hartley and Noble and I'll stick that link um, in the description as well but basically it gives you the angle to throw to so the angle is important but the main thing is that you want to be on the narrower side of it because the filters open up to fill that shape perfectly which means if you throw wider than it um, it, 
the filter sits entirely on the bottom, the bottom forms a plug, where if it's a bit narrower the paper can fold in. Does that make sense? So if you imagine this cone was wider than it is and this is the shape of the filter, the filter will just go down and plug at the bottom, where if it's narrower as it is at the moment it hits the top first, and if that's a paper filter that's absolutely fine. It will, um, it will just crumple in, but it can't do that the other way around. So always better to be narrower rather than wider, but if you have that guide or my printable one, you can actually just get it to exactly right. Now I've got two to throw. One of them's a swirly, and one of them, I believe, is a nautilus, which brings me on to the next point, the ridges on the inside. Um, they're very important, and particularly so at the bottom. So they have raised ridges. It doesn't have to be raised ridges like that. You can carve into it, you can stamp into it, you can put slip dots, or you can do like a swirly design. The swirly design might go with it for the bottom, and it's the bottom part that's the most important, so I put slip dots down at the bottom. But basically you need to keep the filter slightly away from the wall, because if it completely sticks, the coffee can't get past it. Um, and so it will slow down to the point where it, it doesn't brew a particularly nice cup of coffee. Um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. The swirl will open it up just a fraction. Um, but yeah, you've got to do some, some form of texture. It can't just be a perfectly smooth thing on the inside. But it can be smooth near the top if you wanted to. It's just that last few inches that matter, um, or matter the most. They put the ridges the whole way up, and I would recommend doing that unless there's a good reason that you don't want to. But um, in the case of something like a swirly design, that will keep the filter away from the edge um, for most of the height, and it's just that bottom inch that I need to add something to. And I could carve, um, if you've got the diamond core carvers, you can adjust the angle of the head so you can actually get them right down into the bottom of something like this. Um, it's just because my glazes flow, uh, I prefer to have the raised slip dots rather than the carved channels because my glazes will flow into the channels a bit. So it makes it easier for them to fill when it's a channel versus a bunch of dots and they're filling in the space around the dots, which they will do a bit, but they won't do to the same extent. So I will come back after this is trimmed and I will add the slip dots then. Uh, use my foot trimming tool to just round the end of that. Uh, and then slide mark there. And then I lift the edge of mine up. You don't have to do this, but um, it gives them some resistance to warping in the same way that a bowl will hold its shape better than a plate will. Um, what I do is find the right tool. Seriously, where's it gone? Don't have many places for tools to hide. Here we go. So it's just one of the, the cheap wooden knives. And actually, for all the fancy tools I've got, this is probably the best, well, this is the best thing for it, but there aren't actually that many other things that could do it. Um, I guess you could do it with a rib. But basically what I do is I get that blade in, making sure it doesn't cut. So I'm always angling it away. And I just lift that outer edge and that gives it a bit of strength. So it will be a lot less likely to warp in the firing. Um, and then I explain this on the uh, blog post and I think probably, I think I had the full video when I made, I went through the full process of making one. So you can see the stands that I fire them on. Don't have one to hand, but basically what I do is I wax resist a band on the base and then I have a, a thrown stand that it sits on, which means that I can glaze the whole of the inside round everything that the coffee will touch and the only unglazed bit is just a band further out on the foot. You can do it by firing them upside down and leaving the rim unglazed which I would do apart from the fact that I'm not happy with how neat that looks. Um, from a practical point of view that's absolutely fine as well. And that's pretty much it to be honest. 
I've got the other video that um, show the full thing and then the blog post will explain a bit further. But I just thought seeing as I was um, throwing one anyway, and I do now have a complete blog post that goes into everything, um, I would discuss that while I threw it. So let me know if you've got any questions in the comments, but uh, check the blog post first because it might well answer everything I missed. It is not easy to throw these and talk about them at the same time, so hopefully that made sense.